Good morning, beloved. Uh, it is Sunday morning, and um, I just wanted to uh, share a word from the Lord this morning um, to bless you, number one. I wanted to say thank you for joining me live, and um, I want to go ahead and get started in prayer and get started with the message. Father God, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the power of your name. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you that you are a good father. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for um, loving us so much to send your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we um, want to just say thank you. I can't say thank you enough because, Father, your word says that we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And so right now, Father, we just say thank you. Thank you, Father, for the peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Father, for leading us in perfect, perfect peace. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for the blessing of the peace that you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray right now everyone listening, Lord, would receive this message. They would have understanding of this message, Lord, and that it would bless them, Father, in right now in every area of their life where they're needing you, Lord. Because, God, you alone know the areas of our thought process the areas of our life where the enemy is trying to take advantage of us. And Lord, we ask you to help us to um, know those areas so that we're not unaware, so that we can take authority of our thought life. And we pray this in Jesus' most wonderful, most powerful name. Hallelujah. So this morning, I wanted to um, share with you on the righteousness of God, um, but also in the righteousness of God, um, there, there are some things that the Lord um, wants to show us to help us to understand the tactic of our enemy and how that um, the enemy is trying to take advantage of us, beloved. And so in John chapter 16, he says, John chapter 16, verse 7 through 11, he says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now, right here, God is saying the Holy Spirit does three things, beloved. First of all, he convicts us of sin. Okay? He convicts us of righteousness. And he convicts us of judgment. Okay, so he says he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. This is what the Holy Spirit does in me and your life, is convict us of sin. Now, a lot of the times the enemy will come to condemn us, to make us feel judged. When um, God put our judgment, Isaiah 53, 5, God put our judgment upon Christ. The Bible says that he was crushed, that he was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon Christ. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. So in verse 8, when he says he will reprove that means convict to convince us of sin, of our sin against him, of our righteousness, and of judgment. So one of the things we need to ask God is help me to have discernment between the conviction of the Holy Ghost and the condemnation of the enemy. Because, beloved, you might actually be thinking the Holy Spirit is condemning you or judging you, and it's actually um, the enemy. 
And then sometimes you can think that um, God will not convict you of your sin. But God, the Bible says right here that the Holy Spirit comes, beloved, to convict us of sin and of, of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, and so today we're going to talk about the sin how he convicts us of sin and the underlying message of the enemy. So one of the most powerful attributes of the Holy Spirit is his ability to show us error without condemnation. When you're reading the scripture and God is showing you an area uh, in your life that is um, not lined up with his word, beloved, um, this is not him condemning you and he's not rejecting you. Um, if, if, if you're feeling condemnation when the Holy Spirit is convicting you, um, there's another underlying issue going on there and it's because of something, maybe how your parents might've responded to you, um, when you done wrong. Um, uh, basically like uh it's a work based type of love and 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 we as parents do this to our children um unbeknowing uh especially if we don't know God and are not studied and learned in scripture um we can send a message to our children that um we love them when they do better but see beloved the bible says that before i was born Christ died for me, okay? And so, um, one of the most powerful attributes of the Holy Spirit is the ability to show us our error without condemnation. Now, when we're being corrected by God, we're not being rejected. We are only being redirected. And if we've been taught by our earthly fathers that we are loved more when we do better, beloved, um, then what will end up happening is we think that God will love us more when we do better. We don't feel like God loves us right here, right now, beloved. So that, that's a powerful thing to understand, especially when you're talking about God. Okay. So he knows our sin. He knows the areas in our life where we are not trusting him and those areas of struggle. And he knows what and how the enemy is deceiving us, okay? So, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13 says, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Beloved, deceitfulness is means to cheat, delude, deceive, to beguile. In the dictionary, the word deceitful means to give a false impression, to mislead. Um, to cheat act dishonestly or unfairly in order to gain an advantage. Um, it's also meaning uh, deceitful is to avoid something undesirable by luck or skill or a person who um, behaves dishonestly for gain or advantage. See, sin in, it, in and of itself is deceitful. The Bible says sin is deceitful. Okay? And so... Uh, Sin gives the impression that by doing this act, sinning against God will cause you to gain an advantage. But in that sin, also, guess what the enemy's doing? Through sin, guess what the enemy is doing? Uh, in 2 Corinthians 2.11, it says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of you, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, what the enemy's trying to do through our sin is gain advantage over us. Um, and then when he tries to gain advantage, like I said, there's an underlying message of the devil um, when we sin or uh, when he's trying to send us a message of God not loving us. There's, a, there's another message and we're about to get into that. It's a very subtle message, just like how Satan came to Eve in the garden and he, he said, did God really say? He was questioning God's goodness. He was questioning God's love um, in order to get us to sin. See, beloved, the thing is, what, what the Satan does is he tries to make us sin against God. And then after we sin, he says, look, you sinned. And then condemns us for sinning. And so it's this whole 
um, what I would call, you know, or even what the world calls insanity circle, where um, we, we're doing the same thing over and over, trying to, and expecting to get a different result. That's actually the definition of insanity, is um, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Um, so Romans 7, 8 says, But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Concupiscence, concupiscence means desire, craving, longing for what is forbidden. Okay, so what Satan is trying to do, how he's trying to get advantage over us, is through um, getting us to lust after those things that are forbidden. You know, have you ever thought about the fact of how, um, how that when you're told you can't do something, it makes you want to do it even more? That, it, the whole thinking behind that, that right there, beloved, the whole thinking behind it is this. Listen, is God doesn't want me to prosper. God does not love me. Therefore, he's keeping this from me. Do you see that? It's an underlying message. When the enemy is trying to tempt you, he's, there's another other message coming behind it. When, when Satan is trying to tempt you, the other message that he's trying to send behind it is this, beloved. God doesn't want you to prosper. Good morning, beloved. God does not want you to prosper. Thank you for joining, sister. The underlying message of the enemy um, and how he gets you to uh, be, how he tempts you to sin against God is he's saying God does not want you to prosper. God does not love you. Okay. And we're talking about how that um, sin um, uh, is a desire and a craving uh, uh, for what is forbidden. If, if you've ever known, like when our parents told us you can't do this or you can't do that. Don't go over there and do that. You're like, well, why not? Are you withholding good from me? I want to see what's over there on that side. Beloved, it ain't greener on the other side of the fence. And it ain't greener going with the devil. I'm telling you now. Hallelujah. So, um, it says, uh, lest Satan should get an advantage of you, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, beloved, what happens is, um, the, the devices of the enemy, he's going after your decision maker, beloved. Satan is going after me and your decision maker. That is our praise. That is when we get up in the morning and we, um, beloved, get up in the morning and are going after God, um, our, our praise and our worship and our mind and we're getting our mind focused on the word, what happens is, God is getting our mindset for the day so that we can actually make right decisions according to the word. But have you noticed that that's where the main place Satan fights us is in our morning prayer time? He fights us in our morning prayer time, beloved. And so Satan's tactic is to go after your decision-making process, beloved. And in this, um, he is trying to tempt you to sin, and this sin is a deception that by committing this sin, you will gain an advantage. Like, for instance, say, stealing. Um, stealing stealing from your neighbor, stealing from a store, stealing from God, the tithe. You know, in your mind, he's tempting you and saying, um, if you do this, you'll have an advantage. You will come up. You will be able to rise above. But it's actually a lie. And then the message behind that lie and the feeling and the essence of that sin is God doesn't love you. He doesn't want you to prosper. See, beloved, you got to get it. Behind every lie of the enemy is a very subtle message that the enemy is trying to convince you and I of that God does not love you, beloved. Hallelujah. See, right here, this is the thing. God is revealing and exposing the lie of the enemy. The lie and the motivation, the temptation, is that God does not want you to prosper to begin with. He doesn't love you. Come on now. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. This is getting good, y'all, because we're about to go to the root right now. We're about to go to the root so we can get rid of some bad fruit, beloved. 
The Bible says that sin works all kind of wicked fruit, but the righteousness and the glory of God, hallelujah, uh, it, 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 it brings forth holy fruit, hallelujah. So in Genesis chapter 3, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes, has God said you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? Beloved, here it is. I, uh, you need to listen to this. Satan said, Did God really say this? Listen, it's almost like the devil saying, me and God, we're up in here. We're in cahoots. No, God and Satan, the Bible says God does not sit at the same table with, um, uh, God does not sit at the same table with devils. God doesn't sit down in fellowship with the devil. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, he said he will uh, uh, prepare a table in the presence of thine enemies. Come on. Somebody needs to get this. God is not in cahoots with the devil. But when Satan said, did God really say, like, did he tell you that? Like, almost like Satan has some information, beloved, that you don't have. Come on now. We need to get this revelation. Satan does not have any other information. He doesn't have any greater information. All he's trying to do is pervert and twist the truth, beloved. You got to get it. You got to get it. Because this right here is so powerful, it will set you free in your mind, beloved. We got to get it, beloved. So right here, listen, he says, did God really say you shall not eat of the tree of the garden? No, he, he twisted and said every tree of the garden. She said no. And the woman said in the serpent, we may eat of the tr fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So now she's quoting the word of God back to him. That's the first hit was, bam, did God really say? And then she said, no, this is what God said. Now she is trying, attempting to use the word of God against the enemy. But check this out. Come on now. He said, and the serpent said unto her, here's number lie number two. He's coming at her again. He's hitting her again. You shall not surely die. He just flat out tells her, you won't die. It's almost like God won't, God won't allow you to die in sin. Hey, come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, there is a very crafty lie right there. Do you know how many children of God are bound up in sin right now in the house of God? They think that that God's grace will cover me. I can go do what I want to do. Come on now. This is the lie of the enemy. Now come on with the, with the third verse. He says, or the third lie. And, and then he says, you won't die. He just flat out says, you're not going to die. And then he goes and he says, for God does know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Beloved, this right here is where the third time he came at her, he convinced her. The third time he came at her, he convinced her. And what was that? For God does know. God is withholding information from you. The very reason why he said don't eat of that tree is he's withholding good from you. Girl, go get that tree. Go get what you want to have. Don't wait on God to bless you. Go out there and grab you up a husband. Go up there and grab you up a wife because uh, God is withholding from you. You got to get your blessing. See, one of the main things that the Lord revealed to me about myself is something that I said within myself when I was a young girl. God don't want me to prosper. I'm going to have to prosper myself. He showed that to me. That I said that to myself in my prayer time, beloved. Come on now. You got to get it. Look, that's all the devil. He's trying to deceive and manipulate you in your mind that God is not good and that he don't want you to be blessed. Beloved, God is good, and he does want you to be blessed. 
Hallelujah. But this lie right here in verse 3, Genesis 3 and 3, he says, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. That's what Eve said. But down here in verse 5, he says, For God does know in the day you eat thereof. See, we got to get this because you know what? I was praying for a customer's children the other day, and I said, Lord, take away their desire for the hidden things because uh, there was some tarot looking witchcraft cards in the house. And I said, Lord, take away their desire to, to try to know the things in the darkness. And you know what the Lord revealed to me about the things of the darkness is because Satan is trying to convince us that God is not good and that we are trying to find our identity in, 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 in on the other side. Because God, therefore, is withholding good from us. I'm telling you, Satan is trying to speak into your subconscious and trying to convince you that God is not good and that he does not have good in store for you, beloved. You got to get it. You got to understand this right now where you're sitting. Say, Lord, I renounce that. I renounce you, devil. You have no place in my mind. You have no place in my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is on the throne of my heart and on the throne in my mind. And he is good and he has nothing but good for me. Hallelujah. See, this lie for God does know. Oh, God's withholding information for it from you, beloved. You got to get it. We got to get it, beloved. We got to understand. Hallelujah. Now, it, the, the lie the lie that the enemy is subconsciously trying to get into your brain is God is unjust. He's unfair. There's something wrong with you. Wow. Come on now. You're a bad seed. God knows it. You're, you're young. You're old. You're black. You're white. You're Chinese. Whatever the lie. See, the enemy is trying to convince you that God is a discriminator. That you got to, if you're good, you got to do good enough. You got to be good enough. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever the lie is. This is what the devil is trying to convince me and you of is that lie right there, beloved. And we give all the glory to God for opening our mind right now because listen, the in, uh, hey, in first Corinthians, he says, be not unaware of the, uh, to be, don't be ignorant of the enemy's devices. But see, beloved, God wants us to have, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Have you ever thought, you know, back when I was in sin, I thought, you know, I don't want to get to know God because the more I know, the more I'll be accountable for. Listen, don't stay in the dark. Please don't stay in the dark because here's the thing, beloved. Here's the thing. And you got to get this. You got to understand this. That that's what the devil wants you to do is to stay in the dark. What does scripture say? Beloved, my people, they perish for what? Lack of knowledge. We perish for lack of knowledge. We are killed and destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's don't stay in the dark. Let's not say, oh, if I don't know it, I'm not accountable to it. Well, see, this is the thing. You're still trying to know it. You're just trying to know it on the other side of sin. You're trying to experience it on the other side of sin. And what is it bringing? It's bringing destruction, beloved, to your life. Uh, all kind of sickness and disease, depression, oppression of the devil. That's all he's trying to do. He's trying to convince me and you that God don't love us. Beloved, I'm looking at you right now. And I need you to know God loves you. And he, ha he has good for you. And you need to renounce those thoughts that God is your enemy. Say, Father, right now, forgive me for thinking you were my enemy. I receive you that you are a good God. You are a good father. And I thank you for exposing the lies of the enemy in my life. Hallelujah. So we begin to lust for the forbidden. That is to transgress the law. See, uh, we're trying to find our identity in the devilish things, in the, in the worldly sinful things. So we need to renounce that. Okay, now moving on. Look, guess what in Hebrews 11 chapter 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please God, for he that comes to God must believe that he is. God says that when you come to him, you must believe he is, that he is God. All right, number one. Number two, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hold on. Rewarder. What is that? He's a good God. 
He wants to reward. He wants to bless. See, I want to share a testimony. When God delivered me from unforgiveness from my family tree. See, beloved, I was unforgiving toward my dad for not raising me in the Lord when I was a little girl. Now, he was a very big part of my process of getting saved. And my dad is now born again on fire with the Holy Ghost. Okay? So, I'm not trying to throw my dad under the bus. I'm just trying to let you know it's real. I, didn't, I, I wasn't raised in the Word of God. Okay, so here's the thing. God showed me that my dad not raising me in the word, as I'm reading, I just get saved that my dad not raising me in the word was one of the reasons why uh, some of the things that happened in my life, but I couldn't point the finger at my dad because I made those choices, right? Right? You got to be honest with yourself. Well, then he showed me that uh, my dad's dad didn't teach my dad the word of God. And my dad's dad's dad didn't teach him the word of God. See, there's this whole family tree lined up behind me, right? They've all passed on, okay? God was showing it to me. And then guess what God did? He stood right in front of all of my forefathers. And he said, I'm calling you. Choose you this day whom you will serve. He was saying, I'm calling you. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. You can't hide behind your forefathers. You can't say they did this, this, and this. And this is why I'm doing this. And then he said, daughter, forgive them. Forgive every last one of them. I started naming them off and forgiving them. I said, I forgive my dad's dad, my dad's dad's dad, 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 all the way to the garden. I forgive them all. And guess what? He said, now forgive Adam. And I forgave her, forgave him. Forgive Eve. And I forgave her. And the next person that was standing right there in my face was Satan. And I said, God, do I forgive him? He said, no, I put enmity between you and him. He said, and your seed will crush his head. He said, he's going to try to strike at your heel, but your seed will crush his head. Who was our seed? Who was the seed of Adam and Eve? Jesus Christ. He crushed his head on the cross. Hallelujah. You need to thank God right there. Hallelujah. And he said, now, daughter, that you see who your real enemy is, me and you, we can work together. Because, beloved, before this, I had in my back of my mind, God doesn't want me to prosper. I got to try to prosper myself. Come on now. We need to get an understanding that God wants you to prosper. God wants you to. He said, beloved, I wish above all that you would be in health and prosper, even as your what? Your soul prosper. See, soul prosperity uh, walking in the love of God is true prosperity. I'm not talking about wealth, but yes, I am talking about wealth. I'm talking about anything that God could ever bless us with. It comes through a renewed mind. See, I was working at a mission one time with a bunch of uh, homeless people, and then I was also working with some people who were lower income. They were holding down jobs and keeping their own places to stay, but they were struggling really bad. And the Lord came to me and he said, daughter, you can't throw money at this. He said, money doesn't help this people. Because when they get it, they're just going to do what they've always been doing. So what do you got to do, beloved? They had to get renewed in the spirit of their mind. They had to get a new mindset, a new way of thinking. And that comes through the gospel. You think, oh, it's not about faith. It's not about this. It, no, it comes through the gospel, beloved. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, all right. John chapter 16, 8 says, When the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And this is the first verse that we started in the beginning of this teaching. Now, I'm just wrapping it up. So, sin is the very definition of unbelief. See, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will convict you of sin. He will convict you of unbelief. Anytime the Holy Spirit comes, guess what? He's coming. If, if, if we've sinned, he, we'll have this feeling over our spirit of compassion and love. And, 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 and um, we'll feel like we're grieving the Holy Spirit. And he'll say to us, daughter, why aren't you putting your faith in me? Beloved, why aren't you putting your faith in God? The only thing that God is wanting us to do is just put our faith in him that, number one, we're forgiven Number one, he's good. Number two, we're forgiven. That that's the whole reason he sent his son, beloved. He confirmed, the Bible says God commended his love toward us. 
That means he proved his love. That, that by sending his son to die on the cross, this was his proof. Beloved, you got to get it. He's good and very good. How can you have faith in God when you don't believe he's good? How, how will you want to serve him if you think he's a selfish God? If you think he's uh, selfish and, and he's trying to take advantage of you? I, I know one sister in the Lord, she told me one time, she said, Sister, I've been told the minute I give my life to God, I'm going to die. She actually believed that. And it was holding her back from really truly receiving everything that God had for her. Beloved, this is serious. It's killing people. Sin is killing people. And they don't realize that it's nothing but a temptation to get what God wants to give you, but you're trying to get it outside of God. Do, are you getting that? Do you see that? We got to get it. So the word reward, he said, but without faith, it is impossible to please God for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's diligently seek him. That means, yeah, okay, you may fall down, but you keep getting back up and you keep seeking after God. Come on now. The word reward means recompense, to repay, to restore, to reward, to deliver. That's why Jesus came is to restore the kingdom. To bring restitution. To put the devil, judgment of the devil in his place. And to restore and deliver us from the snare of the devil. He's a good God. Joel 2.25 says, And I will restore to you the years that the locust, the canker worm. This is all the enemy. This is everything of the enemy, beloved. You got to get it. God will restore to you the years that the enemy has stolen from you. He will restore all that. But you have got to believe and trust and know that he is a good father. Joel 2.28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit. Beloved, why would the spirit of God come into our hearts and our mind? When we are blocking him in our mind, we don't even think he's good. We don't think he wants to give us his spirit. We have all of this dysfunction in our life, beloved. We have got to let go. Feel it. Feel it. Cry it out. Let it go. Say, God, I am so sorry. Let go of the bitterness from your family lineage of how they didn't serve you, how they sinned against God, all the areas and ways they sinned against God. Some some people have a bunch of thieves in their family. Some people have a bunch of drug addicts in their family and thieves. Uh, you know, and we've had all that in our past, in our lineage. But guess what? You've got to let that go. And you've got to forgive them. And you got to go all the way back to the garden and forgive Adam and Eve. And then you got to say, Lord, help me to see who my true enemy is. Because, beloved, truly, God is not your enemy. Satan is. And he is trying to tempt you and to get you to, to renounce God and to, to continue in sin. Trying to spin your wheels to gain and never receiving anything because it's... But when you're doing that, you're not giving the glory to God. You're giving the glory to yourself and you're worshiping yourself and you're worshiping the devil. So, Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank every one of you for joining me online today. I thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that was here that listened to this message, Lord. I bless them in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And Father, right now we are asking you, Father, to give us that grace, give us that mercy that we need, which you have already shed, but help us not give it, but help us to receive it because you've already done everything you've done has been done that will ever be done. You sent your son, Jesus. Now we're just trying to learn. We're trying to grow. We're trying to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, Lord. Help us to be renewed in our thinking, Lord. 
We bless your holy name and we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to share your word, to preach your word, to hear your word, to be renewed. Lord, I pray that this word will take root and bear fruit, Lord, for your kingdom, for your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For you're a good, good father is who you are. Is who you are, is who you are, and I'm loved by you. Is who I am, is who I am, is who I am, because you are perfect. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good father. Is who you are. Is who you are. Is who you are, and I'm a love by you. Your love, beloved. Have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his children his peace. Amen. Please share this video and have a wonderful day.